Just after the First World War ended, my grandfather decided to open a grocery store. He really didn't know the grocery business at all. But uh, he realized that the job he had at the time, in which he was a foreman of a large factory, over 200 men, would not work out. And the reason was that he was the youngest man meeting with the elders in the local church where he fellowshiped. All of the other elders had been conscripted for the war, had been conscientious objectors, and had ended up going to labor camps up in northern Ontario. They all died there. About uh, 14, uh, 15 million people died of the war, but about 50 million people died of the influenza epidemic that swept the world at that time. They say that one out of every five people in the whole world was affected by influenza. So my grandfather felt that the only way he could be available to serve God's people was to have his own little grocery store, live above the store in an apartment so that when there was an immediate need, my grandmother could come down the stairs, put on the apron, look after the store, and he would go off to tend the sheep. And so he began. Well, uh, it wasn't too far into his career, and, and money was tight. And in those days, $10 was a lot of money. He had just finished up uh, looking after the money in the till and realized that things were short. He wasn't going to be able to pay all his bills. And the Lord laid on his heart to give $10 to a visiting evangelist, a man by the name of George Gould. But, you know, there was somebody standing by whispering in his ear and saying, you know, you really can't afford it right now. And uh, just then, it was closing time, but a traveling salesman with his bags came in the door. And he had under his arm a display. It was a uh, Mutt and Jeff. They were two cartoon characters from th those war years. And he explained that my grandfather's store had been selected as one of only four stores in the city of St. Catharines that was going to be able to display one of these Mud and Jeff pieces that had Jeff down applying some salve to the toe of Mutt. And uh, the, the company was a positive corn cure, people who had corns and bunions. And so uh, the deal was that uh, there would be sales girls that would be canvassing the neighborhood, encouraging people to come and buy some of this uh, special cure, and uh, it would be like printing money. Well, he didn't get the display just then, but he did buy a large quantity. He thought this was just going to be uh, a great way to make funds. And so he purchased a large quantity of this wonderful cure, this salve. Well, you know, it wasn't too long until he read in the Canadian Grocers Magazine, watch out for this fellow going around with this Mutt and Jeff display because he's selling in nothing but beeswax. There's nothing to it. It's all a hoax. At that point, my grandfather thought, well, now, I didn't give the $10 when I should have, and now I've lost a fair bit more than $10. He said there was enough of the fear of God about me that he went out and got in his old car and this time had to drive all the way to Toronto to uh, deliver the money that God's Spirit had laid on him to give at that time. And I think of the words of Scripture in, in Romans chapter 14. The Apostle Paul quotes a verse from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 45 and verse 23 says, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue confess to God. So then, each of us shall give account of himself to God. For every idle word, every word that is wasted, we'll give an account for that someday. For every moment, for every penny, for every opportunity, every ounce of strength, every conscious thought. These things that are given to us are not given to any other creature on earth the ability to speak, the ability to give, the ability to sacrifice. These are things that are only given to the human race. And as such, God considers them to be stewardships, including our ability to speak. We need to be careful that we use our words to purpose, 
to accomplish the will of God. And uh, this little story made a huge impression on me as a young man, realizing that, you know, as, as the, the Lord spoke to the people in Haggai's day and said, look, if you don't give the money to me, it'll just run through your fingers. It'll be like putting money into a bag with holes. God says, if I can't trust you with that money, I'm not going to let it spoil you. And so we need to be careful that we understand when God urges us to do something, it's not for our impoverishing, it's for our enriching. So may the Lord help us to remember that each of us will give account someday. And we need to pay attention to the nudgings of the Spirit of God and to be a worker together with Him and to use the resources, whether of speech or of funds or of time or energy or ability, whatever it is, to use it with view of the day when it will all appear before the Lord. The Lord is very gracious and very kind. He's not trying to scare us into anything. He wants to encourage us to work with him to accomplish his purpose so that in the end we will be enriched by our giving, enriched by our sacrifice, and not impoverished when we come to the end of life's journey and realize we've spent it all in the wrong world.